Doctor Who train keeps rolling along. After the 60th anniversary special is now complete, information is coming in. There's been a lot of discussion as to, you know, people saying that, oh, people are just, uh, um, you know, blowing things out of proportion and no one show is actually really good. But the actual fans are coming out and saying that, you know, this is garbage. They don't like it. This is terrible. I mean, after what happened with Jodie Whittaker's run on it, and people have pretty much abandoned the show, you know, because one, the doctor is not a woman, and two, a lot, a lot of people were complaining that her portrayal of the doctor wasn't even the doctor. They didn't even know what that what she was planning to do. But that's what's going on. So I thought I would take a look at what the media is reporting in regards to this Doctor Who special. So everybody could get a bit of understanding as to what exactly is going on. And I will also I will also touch on a few other things and you know finish up with what, what it is the um the, 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 the final episode of the um of the special actually ended up doing. So let's get into this bit of info first. Doctor Who ratings bomb with Nuti Gatwa's by generation. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. If, it's, if I'm not, well, 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 you know, sorry for that. The Giggle is the least watch of the three specials and has lost nearly half a million viewers in two weeks. Yeah. So people who are saying, you know, all the three, all the, um, all the episodes and them in the three episodes special are really good. I've been playing that kind of thing. Apparently not because it, it, by the time the third one reached, it, lo it lost almost it lost almost half a million viewers. People are just done. That's what's going on. All right. Um. <coughs> excuse me. Geronimo, the BBC Doctor Who, Disney Plus, and Russell T Davies could be in a heap of trouble. Judging by the ratings for the episode involving the introduction of the new Time Lord Ntigatwa, normally whenever a new Doctor is introduced, the ratings see a large spike as fans are curious about who the new Doctor will be and how it will all unfold. However, that isn't the case with Saturday's special. The giggle which features David Tennant regenerating into Ntigatwa as they are nothing to laugh about. Now, the fact of the matter is, from what I come to understand, because I haven't watched it, and I'm really not interested. And I, and I will admit, I am not some massive Doctor Who fan. I know a little bit about it. I've watched a little bit about it. And, and I and I freely, freely acknowledge that, that there are people who know way more about it than me. Way more. But that doesn't mean I can't accurately tell when something is good or bad. If it looks like a chicken, it clocks like a chicken, it sure as hell isn't a woke horse. If something is good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. And like I said, with, with what happened in the first the first of the specials, the way that they were really dressing down the doctor, some people may say, oh, it's just a little thing in the story. It's drawing everybody with that. No, it's an underlying thing that they're pushing and people are saying that and they're sick and tired. And what I got to understand is the second, the second, um, episode in the special actually wasn't wasn't so bad it was actually kind of nicely done but it, it wasn't perfect with that but when you annoy and piss off people from the first what are they what in what what incentive do they have to stick around any more than that i mean in my case look at look at like um look at um picard I watched the first season of Picard. I was not impressed. The second season, I didn't even bother to finish because I was like, nah, this is garbage. And I, I, I up to this day, I have not watched the um, the, the um, third season of it. People are saying it's really good, but I really just have no interest anymore because because you literally turned me off. Now that that's what that, that's what has happened with Doctor Who with a lot of people. You systematically driven your fans away. Let's get into more information here. The giggle is the least watched. Less viewers showed up, and the giggle is the least watch of the three new specials coming in at 4.62 million viewers. That's down from 4.83 million from the second special, Wild Blue Yonder, and down from the 5.8 million from the first, The Star Beast. Now, this is this is the three um three episode special for the 60th 60th 
anniversary of Doctor Who. Just to take that into comparison, for the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who 10 years ago, the ratings for that was something like 10.6 million viewers. Now it's dropped down. And if we just think, we just think, we just think the first, the first episode alone, more than like half of it, 5.8 million. And then that dropped down to 4.83 million. And then it dropped down to the third one to 4.62 million. People, are, like I say, you're driving people away from the first episode. You piss them off. So, so the, majority, the majority of them had no incentive to come back for the second one. And those that stuck around for the second one were, were, were left. I mean, like I say, what, what, what I heard, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't really impressive anyway. And then, you know, that is kind of, that is kind of turned them off more. So most of them didn't, didn't even bother to come back for the final one. And now with the final episode in there, people are like, okay, this is garbage and then no care. That marks a loss of nearly half a million viewers in only two weeks. Right. Um, the, 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 the author had previously wrote that it will be quite revealing if more viewers don't show up for the regeneration episode, which is exactly what happened. If they are already not showing up for the most popular time, Lord David Tennant, it's definitely not a good sign for the 15th Doctor. Yeah, when you take the most popular time, Lord, here, and then have have this, have um, Donna and, and Rose tearing down in the first episode. People are like, this is not what I came here to watch. I came here to watch the Doctor, not you pushing some kind of message in it. And, and, and make no mistake, that is exactly what they were doing. So people are already pissed off in regards to that. So when you have this person coming in here now as the doctor and and, and for what i know not even actually the doctor anymore because now there are now there's two of them that's what's going on people are pretty pissed off a lot of people are, of people are blaming uh, russell t davies for this nonsense one of such one such person happens to be christopher eccleson he wants russell t davies fired now this was the first doctor I ever met. This was the first doctor I was introduced to. Right? This was the first doctor I was introduced to. And he apparently made it very clear his thoughts on Russell T. Davies. Right? Um, Christopher Eccleston wants Doctor Who showrunner Russell T. Davies fired, which he says is the only way he will ever come back to the show. The actor debuted as the ninth Doctor in 2005 as part of the new series. However, he only lasted one season. While attending the UK's For the Love of Sci-Fi 2023 convention, he appeared at a panel with Billy Piper and was asked what would have to happen for that to become a reality. Basically, what would they have to do to get him to want to come back? No, he didn't part terms with them on the, on the best terms, but what he made it very clear what it was. Sack Russell T. Navies, sack Jane Taranta, sack Phil Collison, sack Julie Gardner, and I'll come back, he answered. So can you arrange that? Yeah, he ain't even playing anymore. He made it very clear. Get rid of them and he will come back. Now, why would he say such a thing about such a nice, upstanding, caring you know, loving of the fans and what he's doing individual, like Russell T. Davies. Why would he say that? Well, maybe it happens to be with certain things Russell T. Davies has been saying, you know, and when he's going out and mocking fans about certain stuff. So, this is Davros, right? This is all the new and stuff. Davros is, um, he's part Dalek and part, um, right. First introduced to the series canon in the 1975 series Genesis of the Daleks, one of the defining features of the robotic creature's original creator has forever been his heavily scarred and disfigured appearance. Explained in canon as the result of a nuclear attack launched by a group of Thal warriors during his war against his own Khaled people. Right. So that's what, you know, he, he, he looks like. That's what it is. But Russell T. Davies decided... They're going to change Davros. He's no longer going to be scarred. He's no longer going to be in this um and it, well, this, the same wheelchair was basically like a life support system thing that, he, that he's in. Right? He's no longer going to do that. And, and listen to his explanation for it. 
We had long conversations about bringing Davros back because he's a fantastic character and why are you trying to ruin him? Time and society and culture and taste have moved on. Hmm. And there's a problem with the old Davros. He's a wheelchair user who is evil. That's Russell T. Davies' big problem, that he's a wheelchair user who is evil. He continues on. I had problems with that. A lot of us on the production team did too. I, I want to know who these people are on the production team. Because if, if these people you hand pick with the same mindset as you, well then clearly. He goes on, associating disability with evil. Trust me, there's a very long tradition of this. So apparently, if you're, if you're disabled in any way, you shouldn't be evil. Because that's somehow wrong. You understand me? That, that, that's somehow wrong. You have Professor Xavier who's uh, disabled. You know, he's the leader of the X-Men. But apparently, he's, he's somehow evil because of that. You understand me? You have Daredevil who's, who's disabled. He's blind. He's a hero. But no, that's a problem. But according to Russell T. Davies, once it is, you are disabled. In a wheelchair, that's wrong to depict you as evil in any way, shape, or form. He continues on, I'm not blaming people in the past at all, but the world changes apparently. Apparently it changes to what he wants, that's it. And when the world changes, Doctor Who has to change as well. So we made the choice to bring back Davros without the facial scarring and without the wheelchair or his support unit, which functions as a wheelchair. But this is how they made him look. And people were thinking, you know, well, this was probably some, going to be some kind of, um, you know, um, before Davros ended up the way he was. And people were like, okay, no problem. They were going to but then, then they get to find out he's going to look like this now because Russell T. Davies believed that, you know, his original appearance scarred and, and in this life support system that, 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 that access, access a wheelchair is wrong because any disabled person being depicted as evil is somehow horrible. Well, some of, some of the, um, the, some of the, the Doctor Who fans decided to um, speak to him in regards to this on Instagram. Let's look at this one. Robbie Gard Gardner here says, Davros isn't a wheelchair user. He's a partially mutated Khaled in a life support system, halfway between Khaled and Dalek. Like I was perfectly fine seeing Davros pre-accident. I think a lot of fans have wanted to see this for some time. But to insist that this is for better representation of disabled people is just utterly bizarre. If we're not going to pretend that, as you suggest, Davros was never in the chair or he just got better, well, that undermines one of the greatest villains who ever created. Reasonable, reasonable comment to make. So how does Russell T. Davies respond? Tough. Tough. You don't care. You, you, as a fan, come out and say, listen, this change that you're making doesn't make sense with the reason that you're doing it. And it's destroying a great character. And he's like, tough. I'll do whatever the hell I want. I don't have to answer to you. Screw you. That's it. That's his response. But if you think, if you think that was his only one, oh no. A next, a next, a next, um, a next fan may be not coming. Will you be changing the Cybermen neck so it doesn't upset our friends with prosthetic limbs? How does Russell T. Davies respond? Oh, poor baby crying emoji. You're openly mocking the very people who are so who are your fan. I said before again, this is why people are sick and tired of this shit. This is the reason. These are the, the very people who some some people try. To defend like then like, the stone and then they're just so progressive or so the other. No, these people don't care about you any way, shape, or form whatsoever. He's out there openly mocking people because as far as Russell T. Davis is concerned, he could do whatever the hell he wants, and you're supposed to just shut up and take it. This is why, and I've said before, this is why, this is why manga is baiting the ass off of comic books. 
you know, because when these authors talk to their fans, they listen to them, they interpret them, they get to and they move with it. No, you have all these Western people in comics, in movies, in TV, whatever, openly attacking their fans because as far as they call it, you're supposed to shut up and do whatever, whatever I tell you to, like whatever I tell you to, because I'm all the way up there, you're all the way down there. That's it. So these were, these are the words of Russell T. Davis. I'm not, not making this up. This is what he said. One person talked about Davros. It's a little tough. A next person talked about, so, so you, are you going to be changing the Cybermen so it doesn't upset people, people with, um, with, um, with um, prosthetic limbs? Like, oh, poor baby, crying, crying emoji. No, this is what he's doing. This is, why, this is why it's going on. But if you think that was the end of it, and you're thinking, well, you know, the new doctor is going to be a black man and everybody's going to be like that. No, Russell T. Davis has to let you know he's going to screw that up too. And he doesn't care what you think. He doesn't care what you think in any way, shape, or form. Right? Sure, on a Russell T. Davis promises Nuti Gatwa's run as the doctor will unroll a whole new Doctor Who mythology admits new fantasy focus will annoy people yes it will annoy people and it's no longer going to be sci-fi no 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 it's going to be some kind of fantasy thing because that's what happening right the um the, the doctor is somehow split and you know two people are not kind of and they're going to kind of fantasy crap and i think like you know all doctors are, are going to exist somewhere out in the multiverse, all this nonsense that nobody asked for. But he's out there telling you, listen, this is going to annoy people and I am perfectly happy with it. This is who you are out there protecting. This is the man who's ruining Doctor Who and bald faced looking at you and saying, tough. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. You have a different opinion. I'd love to hear it. If you like the video, so they hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, ring the notification bell, and be notified every time I put out a new video. And I shall see you all next time. Take care.